Drinking Buddies, we have here the four regular releases of E.H. Taylor Bottled and Bond that are released by Buffalo Trace, which is the best. Let's go. I'm your drinking buddy. All right, Drinking Buddies, so we have here E.H. Taylor Small Batch Bottled and Bond 100 Proof. We have E.H. Taylor Single Barrel Bottled and Bond 100 Proof. We have E.H. Taylor Straight Rye Bottled and Bond 100 Proof. And we have an E.H. Taylor single barrel store pick. So those are the four regular releases of Buffalo Trace at Bollard and Bond. Yes, there are a few others. They have things like the four year marriage and the warehouse C and the uh, four grain and th the eight, those things exist, but they're complete unobtainium and they're not regular releases. They're released once and then gone forever. So these are regular releases. They're released um, regularly from Buffalo Trace. This is not an uncommon bottle for me to find, uh, but the rest of these are really hard to find, to be honest. Uh, single barrels are getting harder and harder to find. The rye I found exactly one time ever, and the single barrels that are picks, I've never even landed one, I just have a sample. So, I get it, these bottles are hard to find, but it's sometimes helpful to figure out which one you should be hunting. If you can focus your laser attention on one of them, that's more useful than trying to find all of them sometimes. So, I think the only way we can do that is to do a little blind and figure out which one is the best. Now, I know the the um, the single barrel store pick could vary from you know store pick to store pick. Maybe I have a really good one here. Maybe I have a really bad one here. I doubt that, but um, personally, I have often when I've blinded, I have found the small batch a little bit better than the single barrel. It's just personal taste. I like the way that this is blended. It's perfect. Um, personally, I mean, not perfect, but it's really good. <sighs> this one's really bright. Oh yeah. I like a nice cherry, like, like, like fluorescent red maraschino cherries in the jar with the heavy syrup. This is, I mean, there's three bourbons and one rye, rye up here. So the rye should really stick out. This is one of the bourbons for sure. That is really good. That is just straight up loaded for, with flavor for 100 proof. Drinking a little bit hotter than 100 proof, but very, very tasty. Lots of cherry, lots of vanilla, a little bit of an oak thing. Um, Really nice brown sugar thing on the finish. Really good, really good. <sighs> These are different nose. <sighs> Very different nose. I wonder if that means this could be the rye. I don't know for sure, but this one's giving me a little bit more spiciness. Rye spice maybe, but hey, there's there's rye in all of these. So I'm not saying this is necessarily the rye. I'm just getting the smell of rye on my nose. And a barrel char, it's like older, older vibes. A little bit of a leather shoes thing here. That's the rye. Nice and spicy. Um, the uh, the cherry on this is more subtle than it was on the first one. It's still here. It's a little bit more of a candy cherry, but it quickly turns into spice and a slight herbal thing. Um, herbal tea, maybe like black tea a little bit. Really good, really solid. I don't know which one of those two I like better to be perfectly honest. We'll probably have to figure this out on the second time through. <sighs> this one's giving me just like a really classic bourbon nose all around, like brown sugar, bourbon, vanilla, little bit of a, a dank thing. Oak and oh yeah, the black tea note that I got on here, it's stronger on here, black tea for sure, like sweet tea. Oh, okay. So I'm a fool, that's not the rye. That is just a, one of the bourbons, this is the rye. So I just got a little bit of a rice spice thing on here and a little bit of an herbal thing, so it immediately just gave me rye vibes. But this is very clearly the rye. 
Um, this has got a lot more, a lot more of those notes. So there's more herbal tea, there's more black tea, there's more um, pumpkin spice, there's more of that herbal note. I guess that herbal note is like, I, it's really herbal tea vibes for me. This one is um, spicy and not as sweet as the first two also. So if you're a sweet whiskey fan, the first two are sweeter. But this is also, the finish on this is also pretty uh, cherry candy as well. So those two do have a pretty similar flavor profile, which is interesting. Now this is like the dankest one so far. This is like wet oak, age. There's age going on on here. There's the, this is, um, I think, one of the single barrels. Wow. So um, I'm just going to be saying, I'm warning everybody now that I'm going to be saying cherry a lot here because this is a flavor profile that gives me cherry. I don't get cherry off of everything, but I tend to get it off of Wild Turkey products and Buffalo Trace products, especially Weller and E.H. Taylor. Um, but yeah, so this is really giving me tons of cherry. Uh, this has got like fresh cherries. This has got like candy cherry. There's a little bit of a medicinal cherry thing on here. It's like the trifecta of cherries. Um, yeah, this is tasty. I'm really not sure which one I like the most. I'm leaning towards one and three being my favorites, but I'm gonna have to go through these again. All right, drinking buddies. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that I think that this, it has to be this, I think it's the store pick because it is, I think these are the other two bourbons and it is noticeably better than the other two bourbons. So this is kind of leaving these two behind. And I think the rye is also doing the same. The rye is leaving them behind. And I think it's just a close second to whatever this is, which I think is the store pick. So I think this is the store pick. I think this is the rye. Um, I think this is the single barrel and I think this is the small batch. Um, and my least favorite, I think is glass two, which I think is the single barrel. This one's just giving me more, well, this one was giving me more age. So maybe I should flop that. Yeah, this is the single barrel, this is the small batch, and the small batch, I think, is my least favorite. Let's find out. Uh, so yeah, the best two were the, what I think is the the single barrel uh, select, the, the store pick, and the rye. So what I think, let's find out. So this is the single barrel. Okay, so I had these two backwards. This one is giving me more age than this one, on the nose especially. This one was, this one has the dankest nose, like. So, and I know that the small batch is younger than the single barrel. The sing small batch is batched and the single barrel is one barrel and they're usually around 11 years old. I do very much like both. Um, I did say that right, right? Yeah, that's crazy. So once again, small batch defeats the, yeah, small batch defeats the single barrel again. But uh, let's see if this is the right. So yeah, that's the rye, and then this is the single barrel select, the, the pick. So the pick was the best, the rye was the second best, the small batch was the third best, and the single barrel, man, this is kind of crazy. I'm, I'm just kind of surprised that this keeps happening. Single barrels can vary from batch to batch. Maybe I got one that's just okay, to be honest. It's still a good pour, but this is also another chance that this is like batch to perfection. It's right at that right age where you're getting those vanillins, you're getting those caramels, you know, that six to 10 year on bourbons. Really does give you really does give you a sweet spot for sweetness, caramels, and vanillas. Anyway, drinking buddies, if you're out there hunting, try to find some some uh, E. H. Taylor single barrel store picks and the the straight rye because those were the two best. And then you know what? You just can't patch up pass up these small batches when you see them. Cheers, drinking buddies! Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.